In this video, I want to explain problem 8.4 in chapter 8 of your circuit analysis textbook. This is from Fundamentals of Electric Circuits by Alexander and Sadiku, the McGraw-Hill Education textbook for an introductory circuit analysis class. Chapter 8 is our RLC circuit, second order circuits chapter, and so these homework problems were assigned for a quiz that we will have on Monday. So let's go ahead and take a look at the problems. In this first problem, we have this schematic given here. We have a 4U of negative T voltage source. And so what that basically means is prior to the T equals zero mark, this was behaving like a 4 volt voltage source. And then after T equals zero, it's going to behave like a short circuit. Over here we have a 3 ohm resistor, 0.25 Henry inductor, 0.1 farad capacitor, and the voltage across that capacitor is going to be our reference point V, and then we've got a 5 ohm resistor here and a 4 U of T amp current source. So right at T equals zero, what's happening? This voltage source is effectively turning off and becoming a short simultaneously with this current source going from an open circuit with no current going through it to now being a 4 amp current source. So simultaneously those two things are happening. We're asked to find several things here. We're asked to find our initial conditions on the voltage and the current here. And the current is going to be, I didn't label that in this schematic, the current is actually going to be through the inductor from left to right. So we're looking for I at zero plus. So that's right after, immediately as and right after this transition has occurred, turning on this current source, turning off this voltage source. So we're looking for I at zero plus, that's the current going through this inductor, and V at zero plus, that's the voltage across this capacitor. We also want to get the derivatives of both of those quantities at t equals zero plus, and we also want to look at what is the terminal condition, what is the steady state v of infinity and i of infinity. So what we're going to do, which will inform what's happening at zero plus, is we want to look at what happens at t equals zero minus. And so at t equals zero minus, what's happening right before? Well this voltage source is behaving like a four volt voltage source. The inductor will have reached steady state, so it's behaving like a wire. The capacitor will have basically turned into an open circuit. And over here, this current source will not have any effect yet because it's still for U of T right before T equals zero is gonna be at zero. So if we scroll on down here, this is what we have at T equals zero minus. So we have a four volt voltage source. Here is our I labeled through there. The inductor here is behaving like a short, capacitor behaving like an open, and the current source not yet activated behaving like an open. And so this looks very much like a voltage divider with a couple of these open circuits in here. So we've got a voltage divider with four volts, three ohms, eight ohms, and so five eighths of the voltage, five eighths of this four volts is going to end up across the capacitor. So we get 2.5 volts there. That will also be our V of zero plus. So as it turns out, the voltage across a capacitor cannot have a stepwise instantaneous change. And so if you have 2.5 volts right before T equals zero, right looking at the limit as T approaches zero from the negative side, then we have 2.5 volts at zero minus. We will also have that same voltage at zero plus. We have 2.5 volts for our V of zero plus. And then if we're looking for this current through here, we've got open circuit, no current going there, open circuit, no current going here. So we have four volts dropped across this combination of three ohms and five ohms. So four volts divided by eight total ohms works out to a half an amp. And that is also going to be our current after zero, immediately after zero at zero plus. And so we have I of zero minus equals I of zero plus, and so four divided by eight or one half amp. So those are our initial conditions. And then what we want to do is also use that to figure out at zero plus what is gonna happen 
in terms of di dt and what's going to happen in terms of dv dt. So let's go down here and look at zero plus what does this circuit look like. So at zero plus now this four amp source has been turned on. We've got the capacitor coming back into play. We've got the inductor coming back into play but we're going to go ahead and label our initial conditions that we know and these are going to be maintained right at zero plus. We've got half an amp flowing through the inductor. Of course, it's also going to flow through this 3 ohm resistor that's in series. Everything in this branch right here is going to be half an amp. We've got 2.5 volts across this 0.1 farad capacitor. We've got 5 ohms here, and we've got to figure out where is all this current going. So we've got 4 amps. We already know how much um, current is flowing through the inductor we can very easily figure out how much current is flowing through the 5 ohm resistor just by applying some Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's current law. So here we go. Let's look at this. We have half an amp flowing through the inductor and then if we add that to the 4 amps coming in from the source, those are known currents we already have and then we can say we're going to lose out of this node whatever the current through the capacitor is and then we're going to lose through this the voltage across this 5 ohm resistor divided by 5 ohms. Well we know the voltage across this is the same as the initial voltage across the capacitor 2.5 volts because these are in parallel. So we've got 2.5 volts divided by 5 ohms so that's going to work out to a loss of half an amp. And so what that means is the current through the capacitor at t equals 0 plus is 4 amps because we had one amp coming in through the inductor, four amps coming in through the source, so four and a half amps in, and then we're losing half an amp through this resistor current that's going to be going downward, and so four amps ends up going through the capacitor. And we know for a capacitor, I equals C dV dt. And so I, of course, four amps through the capacitor, C, is going to be the 0 0.1 farad, so we'll pop that in there, and that multiplied by dv dt at 0 plus, we can go ahead and divide 4 by 0.1, and so down here, what do we get? Our dv dt at 0 plus is going to be 40, and the unit's there, 40 volts per second. So if you divide amps by farads, you get volts per second. And so we can also figure out our current here, um, we know the current initially through there. We can go back to Kirchhoff's voltage law around the left mesh and we can figure out what the voltage is across the inductor and we know that V equals LDI dt for an inductor. So if we look around the left mesh, so right here, here is our left mesh. We have current one half amp flowing through the 3 ohm resistor, flowing through the inductor and then we have 4 amps total uh, flowing through the um, capacitor. And we also know that there's 2.5 volts dropped across the capacitor. So 3 ohms times 1 half amp, that's the resistor voltage, plus VL, that's the inductor voltage, plus the 2.5 volts dropped across the capacitor has to equal 0. So what that means is our voltage across the inductor works out to be negative 4 volts. And so if we go through here, VL equals L di dt. Well, VL is negative 4 volts. And so that equals 0.25 henrys. That's the inductance that we have times di dt at 0 plus. So we just divide 4 volts by 0.25 and we get negative 16 amps per second. So that is our di dt at zero plus. And now we also want to know what are our final conditions. So I did not put that into the solution here, but let's go back and look. So if we look at our final conditions, what do we have? This is going to behave like a short. The inductor is going to behave like a short. And so we will just have a three ohm resistor right here and that will be this entire branch and then we will have an open circuit right here and we will have a 5 ohm resistor here and a 4 amp current source so what we will end up having it look like is a current divider to where we have a current flowing out of here 
and it will be divided amongst 5 ohms and 3 ohms. And so if we try to solve for that, how much current are we going to get through the 3 ohm? How much current are we going to get through the 5 ohm? Whatever current we get through the 3 ohm, that is going to be your I of infinity. And as it turns out, that will be turning back this way. It will be in the opposite direction of how I is indicated. And that is going to work out to be 4 times 5 divided by 8. So it's 4 amps times the opposite resistance. 4 times 5 is 20 divided by the sum of the two resistances. So that will be 20 divided by 8. So that will be negative 2.5 amps flowing through the inductor from right to left. So negative 2.5 amps. That is our I of infinity. And then we want to figure out our V of infinity. And so to figure that out, you can easily just figure out what the voltage is going to be across that 3 ohm resistor. So if you take the 2.5 amps that we just calculated, multiply that by 3. So 3 times 2.5 is going to give us 7.5. So we'll have 7.5 volts. That will be our V of infinity. So that's how you solve problem 8.4 from the homework.